Hello! What's up? You haven't seen me in a while. I have short hair now and these glasses for looking at screens for a long time that is good for my peepers. So this is who I am now. I've reached my final hipster form. Anyway, let's cut to the chase. So I did what any reasonable adult would do when they fell into a depressive episode. Spent a stupid amount of money. And when I was a kid, I used to love to play video games. I was addicted to Spyro and Kingdom Hearts. And then I became an adult and I started working and I didn't stop. And it wasn't good for me. I was overworking myself. So I had a teeny, you know, healthy mental breakdown. And I was like, that's it. That's it. I'm gonna play a video game. But if you will look around my apartment, you know, I, I know what I'm about. Pastel colors make me feel calm. They make me feel happy. So I surround myself with them. And honestly, I borrowed a friend's PlayStation 3 at one point and it affected my mood whenever I would walk past and see just like this dark spot amidst all the pastel. But anyway, I found this website called Colorware and it's a really, really neat website. You can get a bunch of stuff on it like headphones and in-game systems. And it's actually like a little make a character screen. You can choose which part of your system that you want to be, which color. They have a bunch of colors you can choose from. And I remember I was messing around with the colors and my coworker like leaned over my shoulder and was like, you really want to spend that much extra money just to get something with pastel colors and I was like yes anyway I knew I wanted this thing very very badly and nothing was going to stop me but you know I I wanted to save as much money as I could so I sent colorware an email and I was like hey so I have this YouTube channel and like I do stuff on the internet and you know I could like shout you out or like promote you if you, you give me the, the discount maybe i don't know they're like sure if you make a little video with us you can get this guy for free look at him look at so cute white's the bear. look is so cute yeah that's what's happening a little sponsored video situation then i filmed myself just playing the video games and you know we can't all be the game grumps yeah i, I didn't think it was entertaining just me you know talking about the video game i was playing and i felt Pretty awkward. So I was like, ah, idea. You guys haven't heard from me in a bit. I just released a film. Let's do a Q&A. Because for some reason, you guys want to know things about me. I don't get it, but like, okay, it's fine. You're gonna give the people what they want, I guess. And I, and I filmed that last night. I just got done watching Pinocchio, and I made the fish that they have in the movie, and it looked, it looked really good, and you know, miraculously, it tasted good too. <laughs> But I filmed it at midnight, so I was very quiet and thinking about ghosts. Hey. My house is making a noise and I don't like it. Ah! Would it be weird if I put lo-fi music on? <laughs> I'm scared. If you don't want spoilers. So this is the third time in this video but it's happening here we go okay let's see if i can figure out this tech situation uh, take a few sec i'm clicking you so i recently just started a new game and i will not be content until i have a vulpix yeah this is my eevee his name is muffin also thought this would be like a neat oh i'm sorry 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 um, i thought this would be a neat little insight into like you know, what what my usual days off look like. So I got, I usually have my editing set up here and then beside me, I'll have this so that, you know, when my heart starts fluttering, I can just turn to my right and I'll just, you know, put this little guy on and make me feel a little bit better. On Sunday, I play D&D and then on Mondays, I will usually treat myself and order in some ramen and watch Critical Role. And then when I'm not doing those two things, I'm editing. <laughs> but I just released Alice's Adventures at Wizard School um, so that's usually when I'll cut myself some slack when I release a big video that I've been working really hard on for a very long time. Speaking of which, if you want to go watch that, I'd appreciate- that'd be cool. Okay, what do you look for in most- any LARP that you attend? So one, if my friends are going, I immediately want to go. So that's absolutely a factor, but honestly, like, anything that- I've never done before. It really catches my interest. Also, it's like I love documenting stuff that you guys have never seen before. What show you enjoy binge watching? So, I don't watch a lot of TV because I'm a workaholic. <laughs> but in the same depressive episode where I got this switch, <laughs> I also started watching Critical Role and I almost did nothing but watch Critical Role. That show got me through 
a lot. <laughs> um, so what made you want to LARP originally? Funny story, I was like, oh my god, that would make a funny video and, you know, a funny story to tell at parties. Uh, and here we are. Because, you know, I'm the kind of person where it's like, I'd like to try everything once, you know, like maybe not skydiving or cocaine, but <laughs> I showed up and I was like, oh no, oh no, I love this. So I'm getting a lot of questions about like life stuff and, and mental health stuff and like I'm also still figuring it out. I, I don't, I, I don't know what I'd do in that situation. I also don't think so highly of myself that I know how somebody else should leave, live their life, you know? Because I, I am not a professional. I'm not a therapist. No one, no one on the internet is. In terms of mental health, get a therapist. Like I look back on my life and I was like, okay, there's pre-therapy Momo and there's post-therapy Momo and they are two vastly different people. Just being able to sit down with someone who is trained to give you coping mechanisms to deal with what's going on inside your brain. So yeah, having friends there to help you is nice, but they can only do so much, so I go go see a professional if you can, if you're in the very privileged position where you can. Do it. If you could go back to one LARP, what LARP would you go back to? I would go back to Skull and Crossbones in a heartbeat. No, stop. Stop moving! But it, I'd like to make something new with it. But I don't know when that's gonna happen. Cause I'm always gonna wanna go to a game that I've never gone to before a game that I've already gone to, does that make sense? Your aesthetic is beautiful. I'm not super sure how to stick to or choose aesthetics tips. So I didn't choose the pastel life. Pastel life chose me. And I, like, I remember back in university, I would just get a bunch of stuff that was like hot pink and I was like, ooh, I don't like this. And then I'd get stuff that was softer and I'm like, ooh, I do like this. And over the years, I've just collected things that I realized it's like, oh, I love this and this goes nice with this. There was never a point in my life where I was like, okay, I wanna look like Sailor Moon threw up on me. Just, you know, I'd, I'd wear an outfit with a Peter Pan collar and I'd feel good about myself and I'd feel really cute and comfortable. Outfit of the day, outfit of the day. Yeah, yeah, feeling myself. And I'd paint my furniture pastel and it would make me feel good and, and at home. So yeah, just the things that make you happy, surround yourself with them. That includes people. Uh, what three things bring you the most joy? This is an interesting question that I do not know the answer to, so I wanted to answer it, but just give me a second here. Um, the group chat with Kaza and Cheyenne. <laughs> Coffee, like especially when I'm traveling, but at any time, I am always like 20% happier when I'm walking anywhere with a cup of coffee in my hand. Just, it makes me feel like I'm ready for the day, you know? Ah, oh, no! Peter Pettigrew. Waking up early. It's something that I have always, like since I was a kid, found very difficult. But when I wake up early and I like make myself a coffee and I can like see the sun rising, it just instills this feeling of like, Gotta pay Dio. Like I just feel like anything is possible and I just wanna sing. Somebody said any LARP dreams that you have. Right now the LARPs that I would love to go to is I would love to go to a Star Wars game. Like I wanna play a cute Jedi girl with a pink lightsaber. I wanna go to a Western game. Me and the girls have talked about like bringing Starbright there and learning some country songs. And then there's a bunch of stuff that I wanna go to that's not LARPs. Like I wanna go to the Electric Forest in the States. I want to go to Japan one day. Do you have any advice for people who have had to leave communities for harassment? What's worked for me is don't allow things that hurt you space in your brain. It might take a lot of time. It might take a lot of therapy. But yeah, if you're not happy in a place and you know, even sometimes realizing you're not happy in a place can be difficult. Don't, don't associate yourself with things that hurt you. And you know, that might be hard. There might be backlash, but in the end, I think it's all going to be worth it. But like, what do I know? Do you prefer fantasy or contemporary LARPs? First of all, I like them both, but um, costuming for fantasy games is very difficult. Armor is expensive. Pretty dresses are expensive. Putting on elf ears is a pain. Little caterpie. It's just, it's a lot of effort, and it's, it's, a, it's, it's a lot of money. Whereas with games that take place in modern time, I just kind of use it as an excuse to like you know, get cute outfits <laughs> for myself. And I don't have to worry about saying like, oh, verily, forsooth. Like, I don't have to worry about dressing up my dialogue in order to make somebody else feel immersed, if that makes sense. Like with Jen Jenae, I was like, oh, this isn't a style that I usually wear, but you know, let's, let's go a little goth for a bit. And with Livewire, I'm like, I like things that are comfortable and I don't really dress very provocatively, so let's switch that up a little bit. Fuck it up, Muffin! And then whatever I buy for those characters, if I buy anything at all, if I don't just take stuff out of my closet, I can wear it again after. Whereas like, you know, 
I'm not gonna be walking around in Feline's getup very often. I also think it's a much easier genre for like new players to get into because they can wear jeans and a t-shirt and it's and it's not gonna like, you know, ruin anyone's immersion. Somebody asked, what's editing like? <laughs> Stressed out just thinking about it. So it's it's time consuming. And I actually worked as a professional editor for a wedding company for a little bit, so I, I have trained experience making event videos. So here's typically my process. Um, so first of all, I will skim through all the footage just to see like what I got at that event. And then while I'm skimming through the footage, I'm gonna be like, okay, uh, what am I gonna talk about for this game? Typically I'll talk about like, <gasps> Pikachu! <laughs> What was I talking about? You're so cute! Fuck! <laughs> um, oh, I genuinely forget what I was talking about. I got, I got excited, I saw a Pikachu, I'm sorry. Editing, right. So based on what I think I'm gonna talk about, you know, like, the location, and the workshops, and like, what happened at the game, I'll make titles for those in a sequence, and then I will begin a rough cut, which is basically I'll go through all of the footage front to back and find anything that I think is usable. If I'm going through footage that I got during the game, and like, there's a nice shot of the location, I'll put it in the location, but in that same clip I could say something that really sums up my character, and so I'll take that and I'll put it in the character section. Basically, wherever a shot is gonna have the most impact, put it there, wherever it's gonna be the most relevant. Once I have the rough cut, I'll upload that to the um, LARP Facebook page and be like, hey, anybody that wants to be blurred out or taken out completely, uh, just let me know. And while they're doing that, I'll take that time to add like any sort of effects that I want and film my commentary. In that rough cut, I'll usually also put notes for like when I'm filming so I can just go through the thing and like know where I'm gonna say what and when. And then after much blood, sweat, and tears, the thing's done. And then I immediately start working on the next thing. <laughs> Favorite moment in Alice's Adventures. Hmm. You have a tea for this? I need help. I'm really good at investigative reporting. <laughs> Dead at birth. This is hard. Oh, what do I want to learn? Double kick? Ah, uh, yes. I don't know. It's too hard. I don't know. What Disney movie do you think is the most underrated? So it's one of my favorites. One of them is The Three Caballeros, because I just think it's really neat that in the middle of a world war, Disney was like, you know what? We're gonna make a film introducing Americans to the beauty of another culture. And we're gonna make it fucking weird. But my other favorite one is The Hunchback of Notre Dame. And I know it's been criticized for having like, Tonal problems, which makes sense. I can critique a thing while still liking it. I just think Judge Claude Frollo was like, way too real. Just like, the way he manipulated uh, Quasimodo just like, scares the hell out of me. Cause that's how the real world works. Everybody just thinks that they're doing the right thing in their own head. Every What's that phrase? It's like every 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 villain thinks they're the hero or something. It, it dealt with a lot of real things. And I think out of all the Disney movies, I see the real world the most in that one, if that makes sense. But it still has the, you know, like, you know, everybody's singing and, you know, topsy to he. It still has that, like, uplifting feeling that Disney movies have. It just deals with a lot of, like, really real themes. And that's why I like it. Okay, we're gonna switch to Zelda now. Zelda, 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 Zelda. Now I'm moving to this controller. That's something neat that I've noticed about the Switch is, like, you know, I thought it was just kind of a novelty that it's like, oh, you can play it in so many different ways. But it also kind of adds to the nostalgia factor for me. Like, I played a lot of Twilight Princess growing up, and, you know, whenever I play Zelda, I want to play with this guy on the TV. And then when I switch to Pokemon, I find it more comfortable and enjoyable to play it with the handheld version. So this is my horse. Yes, I found a pink horse. I love this game. And I named her Feline after my Skull and Crossbones character. Because she's blonde and she and she pink. Something I don't like about this game is you can't fast travel or go up mountains with your horse. And I want to go everywhere with my horse. Uh, will you be posting any D&D &D on your channel? I don't have plans to right now. So without any further ado, I present what is essentially the gag reel for Seahold Manor, a haunted adventure. 
We had Momo O'Brien, Kelly Eden and Fee, Novo and Knox from the Scabby Rooster Neck of the Woods, and it was DM'd by our very own LARP Analysis. Uh, I'm playing Patch, who's a half-wolf bard. Morgan, make an intelligence check for me real quickly. Why? <laughs> Do we have an old priest and a young priest? No. We have a dead priest? Oh. So the D&D campaign that I'm a part of right now, it's, it's very important to me that it's offline because it's a time that I cherish with with my friends and it reminds me it's like oh I role play because I do like it not just because people ask it of me you know what I mean and it's a time I get to just hang out with my friends and we're not like in performance mode if that makes sense is that something I need to kill come here oh geez 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 Sorry, I know I'm supposed to be answering questions right now, but my brain can only do so many things. Come back here. Where do you think you're going? Excuse me. I did, however, guest on a D&D &D podcast. I don't know if it's going to be out by the time this video is, but information will be down in the description and stuff. It's called Dum Dums and Dragons. I played the same character that I play in my private campaign because I love her. Her name is Doddle. Here is her official artwork by this person. She's a cute little goblin wizard. I do a voice like, like this. <laughs> she's, she's really fun to play. So you guys will get to hear a little adventure from her. I find a collection of dog treats attached to one of the corpse's waists. <laughs> I realize in doing so, Doddle has now seen that I found a collection of dog <laughs> treats on one of the dog bodies. Treats. Oh, I, I, I bought them at the dog store. Ah, <laughs> oh, the dog store. They're from a corpse. <laughs> <laughs> Look on the bright side, it was different than the origami guy. What if the dog was sick? What if he was only just now paying off his vet bills? What if his parents were helping him pay off his vet bills? Donald. What if his parents were also sick? Donald! <laughs> Where is this witch been before? <laughs> I will post about it everywhere when, when it's up because it was it was crazy good. And I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. So That's not going on my YouTube channel, but it is, it is on the internet if you're curious to see. Somebody asked what camera I use. I use the Canon 60D, but I very much hold the opinion that it is not what camera you use, it is what you do with it. Like there's been a couple shots that I've used that were just taken like on a phone. It's all about the content and the framing of it and less so like how expensive the camera is that you use, you know? Is there a place I can cook? There's a place I can cook! It's kind of like an instrument, like you can get a Stradivarius violin. Doesn't mean anything if you don't know how to play violin, if that makes sense. Somebody asked, will more of Alice's adventures uh, ever happen? Um, honestly, I do not know because Alice's adventures was kind of like a fluke. So Alice's adventures was something very special where I looked at all the footage that I got and I was like, this is something we can do. I always go to a LARP trying to do that, but it doesn't always work out. So if I ever come back from a game and I get en enough good shots and I'm like, I can do something like that again, you bet your butt I'm gonna do it. I've actually had the idea that um, maybe I wanna take her to like um, my local theme park's Halloween haunt or like to a haunted house or something, but just like go in character with my little flashlight. I think that'd be really cute. So I said, do you have any tips for being less self-conscious at LARP? No, because I'm still really self-conscious at LARP. What's your favorite type of video to make? I like my big event videos like Bicoline and Bothwell and the Skull and Crossbones and Arm Sister Kane. Because that's what my background is in. Those are the videos that I end up being most proud of. It's also really, really satisfying to come back from an event and see everything that you managed to get and being able to create something out of it. The narrative videos like Alice's Adventures are fun, but very time consuming and very stressful. And videos like this are very easy to make, but I don't, I don't find myself a particularly interesting person. I also am, am very shy. So any video that's just, you know, me talking about myself, I get a little nervous! <laughs> so yeah, the videos like that are like in that flow state where they're just challenging enough, but just, you know, fun enough. My favorite kind of music is, I've been really digging lo-fi music. When I'm not listening to lo-fi music, I have uh, playlists for all my characters on my Spotify. I guess I'll put that in the description box below. But like whatever event that I'm hyped for, whatever character I got on my brain, I usually put on their playlist and I'm very proud of my playlists. But when I'm not thinking about a character, when I'm not thinking about an event, and when I don't want to listen to Celtic music, uh, Lo-fi is typically my go-to because I find it helps me focus but keeps me calm. Somebody asked what were the songs that you were playing in the movie? 
There's a lot of comments on the actual video asking the same thing, so I'll just I'll just answer it now. So the first one is The Chain by Ingrid Michaelson, and the second one is Braille by Regina Spector. I used to know how to play a lot more songs on the piano when I grew up in a home with a piano. Those are the only two that I know now, so whenever I see a piano, those, those are the songs you're gonna be hearing. What did you want to be when you were little? I wanted to be an astrobiologist which is someone that looks for life in outer space. <laughs> Either that or an actress or a teacher. Ooh, there's a lot of goblins here. I don't care for that. There's also a box. Hmm. You guys need to fall asleep. It's like two in the morning. Come on, guys. I want to sleep. What the fuck? Shit's lit over here at this camp. Let's see if I can answer this question while reading this camp. Um, so there's a video that I want to make one day that's LARPs that you can do like in your living room because there's a uh, there's a bunch you can do limbo is one where you're literally pretending to oh shoot where you're literally pretending to be in essentially death's waiting room um i played one game on a bunch of cell phones that was literally we like played it in our closets but yeah there's this whole little subcategory of of role play heavy games that you can just play like with your friends in your apartment no thank you um and I want to make a video about that one day, but geez louise, I have so many other videos that I need to edit first. Critical Role Bro TP. I'm not going to talk about this a lot, because I know anybody that doesn't watch Critical Role is not going to find this interesting at all, but like, gonna be honest, I shipped Jester and Caleb. Went on a long rant about it on Twitter, but like, they both like smutty novels. He's seen too much of the world, and she's seen not enough, so I feel like they balance each other out a little bit. I think they- I think they'd be cute. As well! <laughs> As for like bro TP, the relationship between Not and Caleb is kind of what sold me on on Critical Role. This is cute and wholesome, and I just I like it more and more. Wait, what was in there? No, I got I got better. I got better shields. I don't need you. I don't need you. God, there's so many. Jesus! Oh my god, this is crazy. It just keeps going. What the fuck, guys? A lot of people are asking me like how I come up with characters and how I get inspiration for them. So when I hear about a new universe that- What is it doing? Aww, it's Dope! Nice! Cool. When I hear about a new universe that I'm likely going to be LARPing in, I kind of have an idea, like, right away. Oh, I'm sorry, Boar, but I need your meat. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so Oh, God, I hate that! Oh, God. But yeah, I'll just get, like, a concept right away and I think it stems from like who I would want to be in that universe and who I think would be the most fun to play in that universe and then I start thinking about like okay but what's gonna be fun for other people to play with in that universe and I'll kind of add that to it I'll make a Pinterest board and a Spotify playlist you know I'll use the Spotify radio function oh somebody's living here Hi. Hello! Let's go up this mountain here. Let's see while we while we don't have a horse. Let's see what's up here. And then I'll sketch out my character and then I'll sketch it out again and again until I don't completely hate it. Most of the time I think about like, hmm, if I didn't dress the way that I did, what way would I want to, to dress like? It's just a way for me to, you know, express myself in a way that's a little um, divergent from my norm and my comfort zone. What's that? Let's go explore. Let's go explore. Let's go exploring. A couple people asked me what my favorite flower crown is. I like Valara's flower crown. It's not the most comfortable one to wear. It is pretty heavy. But I really like that I went all the way to a special store to get the antlers for it. I really like the greenery. I think it makes it look a lot more real and I love the variety of it. Yeah, I like all my flower crowns. Also, a couple people were asking where I get them. I make them. Uh, if you want to check out, I'll put a card above here. That's uh, the video where I tell you how I make my flower crowns. You can go uh, check that out if you feel like it. I also tell you how to make a cloak and um, stuff. What is your Hogwarts house? Finally! Get into the- get into the nitty gritty! <laughs> so funny story, I originally thought I was a Slytherin. Oh. <gasps> and then I took the test again, and it told me I was a Hufflepuff. And I made this big Facebook status, it's just like, Hufflepuff, I know who I am, I'm a Slytherin pride, am I right? And like, 33 comments. All of them were like, oh. Oh, honey, no. One of them was from a very dear friend of mine that was like, Mama, I've literally seen you apologize to inanimate objects. <laughs> I messaged my friends and they were all like, No, yeah, you're you're definitely a Hufflepuff. I messaged my boyfriend at the time and he was like, Yeah, no, I only went along with the Slytherin thing because you really wanted to be a Slytherin, but yeah, you're a Hufflepuff. And now I'm very proud to be a Hufflepuff. We're the, we're the party people. 
of Hogwarts. How do I get this? How do I, I want that. How do I get that? I can just climb. Oh. Somebody asked what's the most challenging character you've ever played. That's definitely, definitely Livewire. You're gonna be seeing a lot more of her soon, but she was the school bully. And I don't, I don't like to be mean to people. I'm very, very scared even normally all the time that I'm gonna accidentally hurt somebody's feelings. Like that's like one of my biggest fears is hurting somebody without meaning to. So playing her, I tried to like over communicate with everybody just being like making sure that everything I was doing was okay. I didn't go into like deep role play scenes with anybody that I hadn't talked to beforehand. Like unless they told me it's like, I want to be bullied, I'm okay with you doing this. I, I basically was not mean to them. But also I was at a superhero school playing a supervillain. So I kind of just felt like you know, the hero's punching bag. I'll get more into it in the marked video, but like, it's it, it was very hard for me, one, to make sure that I wasn't going to actually hurt somebody out of game, but also, you know, having a bunch of people come up to you and be like, you're a bad person. Like, it affected, it, there was a lot of bleed <laughs> at, that, at that game. It was very tough for me, but I think it gave people um, a lot of the play that they, they were looking for, and it gave people uh, that hero moment to, you know, take down the bad guy and, you know, defeat the bully of the school and I'm glad that I got to provide people, um, with that even if it was, you know, a difficult challenge for me. But I wanted to challenge myself, so... All worked out! Hey! Hello, friend! Hello! Thank you! Somebody asks, how does it feel being an inspiration in the LARP community? And I'm gonna be honest, stressful as hell! Yeah, it's- it's a big responsibility to feel like, you know, you're a figurehead for this community and you're bringing new people into it. Oh, oh, oh no! Oh no, I didn't mean to sneak! Run! Run, 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 No, 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 I don't want to fight you. 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 Is he following me? Is he following me? Is he following me? I don't have to follow me. I really hope he's not following me. Are you following me? Go back to sleep. Go back to sleep. Yeah, that's how it feels. Being <laughs> a representative of the LARP community. How do you find time to work a regular job, uh, make videos, and LARP? Sounds exhausting. It is. Does that answer your question? <laughs> would you ever do an apartment tour? I get asked this a lot, and I would love to do an apartment tour. I'm very proud of my apartment, but I'm also a very anxious bean. And something about telling strangers on the internet the exact layout of my home stresses me out a little bit. So yes, I, I absolutely will do an apartment tour at some point, but it'll probably be when I am moving out. Because one, that's gonna make me feel a lot- What is this? What is this doing here? Can I move this? Uh, where's my things? Nope. I can't do this, can I? <gasps> What if I put it in here? Like a ball in a cup situation. <gasps> Hello! But yeah, it'll be like a nice little memory for me to be like, oh, here's my old apartment, all the, all the fun times we had here. But also it's gonna make me feel a lot, uh, a lot chiller about it. How do you feel about others cosplaying your characters? That would make me over the moon happy. Part of why I do what I do is I want to, you know, inspire others to to create and to, to, to make things. So like whenever I see anybody draw art of my characters, or I haven't seen a cosplay yet, but that'd be cool. Goodbye friend, you got away, you deserved it. But like anytime anyone creates anything based on something that I have done, not only does it feel, you know, I feel so honored that they would do this thing that clearly took, you know, several hours to do and they were cool with looking at my face for that long like, that's neat but also it's like it makes it just makes me feel good about what i'm doing because i'm like i'm inspiring others to to make things yeah any anything you want to do based on what i've done as long as it's not weird yeah i'm totally i'm very very happy when you do it have you drank water whether i haven't drank a lot of water thank you look how cute this is cheyenne got it for me it's got cats on it favorite pokemon Probably Vulpix. You're just about the cutest little Pokemon I've ever seen. <gasps> oh, the Blood Moon situation's happening. I gotta get out of here. Oh, crap. Oh, oh no. Oh no, we're gonna fast travel. We're just gonna fast travel real quick. <laughs> oh, wrong button, wrong button, wrong button. Oh, oh, we gotta get out of here. Oh, we're out in the middle of nowhere. Oh, we're out in the middle of nowhere. We're gonna go over here. We're gonna hide. 
What is your star sign? I'm a Gemini. I don't know what that means. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Ew. Are you okay with fans coming up to you at, at LARPs? Absolutely. freaking lootly I love meeting you guys. And LARPs is the perfect time to do it. Because we're about to do an activity together, so I, I find meeting viewers at cons is a little more tricky because I'm very shy. I'm very anxious. So I'm always like, yeah, how's, you know, how's your day been going? But if I meet you at a LARP, I'm just like, tell me about your tragic backstory. <laughs> like, it's, I don't know, it's a lot easier. Well, I guess we're gonna kill you. So yeah, if you want to just pop over and be like, hey, I watch your videos and, and I love your work, then yeah, that's cool. And it'll be like, how was your game? You know? Okay. I think we, I think we've done enough now. I also have Mario Kart and Snipper Clips, but that's more fun to play with somebody else. Fun fact, I'm not good at video games, except Mario Kart. I'm very good at Mario Kart. So yeah, thank you very much to all of your questions, guys. I hope you found this video interesting. <laughs> Um, please, if you get a chance, go take a look at Alice's Adventures at Wizard School. Worked very hard on it. I'm very proud of it. It's a found footage film that I pieced together with all of the footage that I got at Bothell School of Wizardry, so it's entirely improvised, but it has a coherent story. Thank you very much to Colorware for, for sending me this little, this little controller. I would absolutely recommend them. You can get so many different things. You can get them professionally painted, or if you're looking to save some money, you can just get those colors, but with, um, a skin. And yeah, I'm gonna start editing now. Thank you very much for joining me on this on this little work break and I'll see you in the next video I guess. Goodbye. Oh. <laughs> do 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 do.